one of the things that I find very interesting is that all of these countries together, and I think it can create a demonstration effect, people will fix as well, um, our, our neighbors uh, in each uh, uh, specific uh, case. But we have to get our message out. And one of the things that really I find very pressing and very bothersome is that we still have Western narratives that dictate what we talk about. It's about media. And we have, since the 2008 financial meltdown, we have a lot of media that's very concentrated. It isn't concentrated in the countries that we come from. It remains in the West. And I look at all of our logos here, you know, and I'll go to our Indian colleague first. I mean, we are necessary. Why are we necessary? I would say we have to break the monopoly of Western narratives about our parts of the world because they still dictate the pace. That's right. I absolutely agree with you. I really believe that BRICS is, uh, is an organization which can in effect threaten or perhaps potentially even replace G7. If you look at the creation of the BRICS Bank, that's certainly something uh, which lends a lot of power potentially to all the BRICS nations. When I hear the phrase in Western media, the international community says, the international community thinks, the international community promotes. What are they talking about? Because they're not talking about us most of the time. This is the kind of discursive change that we need because the international community is the United States and its allies. NATO, throw in Japan, throw in Australia, a, couple other, a few other countries, yeah. some in the Middle East, okay? That's their international community. We need to break out of that. We need to take this language to ourselves. We need Speaking to appropriate it. Speaking of which, it. Peter, you have done a good job on that. I mean, RT has done a very sharp job on that. It's like a well, knife so, cutting straight into Some people say we've done a good job. Some people call us quite notorious. I'll it, take it as a compliment. Yeah, how do you take that? I mean, I'm, I'm flipping this around. I'm really curious. Well, I, t I take it as a... I wear it like a thorny crown, if you know what I mean. I mean, I... Um, as I've said to colleagues before, I remember the first five hate mails. I don't particularly care about the last 1,500. But it shows we're making a difference, and that's what we're supposed to do, make a difference here. Um, me, journalism and the mission of journalism, I think, is in tatters in the West right now. And we have to use the rule of law, facts, verifiable facts, and always try to stay away from sermonizing, because that's what the West does. It sermonizes the rest of the world in the service of its own interests here. And I'd ask, ask my colleagues if they'd like to react to any of that. 